What's up, everybody? It's John Morgan. Listen, I want to just say thank y'all to everybody who has been supporting this podcast. Um, I cannot grow this without the support of the community who allows me to grow. So thank y'all to everybody who's been supporting, everybody who's been sharing it, everybody who is a subscriber on YouTube, everybody who has purchased merch from me, everybody who just tells somebody, you know, through through telling somebody in conversation who share these podcasts and your group texts. Thank y'all. I, I, I cannot do this without you guys. So thank you for that. Right now, we want to ask for a specific type of support right now. If you can, stop what you're doing. Yes, you right now. Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing right now. Go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Become a subscriber to this page, the Live Your Purpose podcast YouTube channel. Become a subscriber. Like, share, tell somebody about it. But stop what you're doing right now. Go to your YouTube page and become a subscriber. Click it. Click subscribe on the YouTube page and become a subscriber of this page. It allows us to grow and it's a, it allows us to, to touch different reach for different people. So please, if you could, if you call yourself a supporter, if you want to continue to see us grow and continue to see us build, stop what you're doing right now. Go to YouTube. Click that subscribe button. Like, thumbs up, all of that. Please, right now, Live Your Purpose Podcast. Peace. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Live Your Purpose Podcast. I'm your host, John Morgan Jr. Um, second part of the day. Before we even get into who our wonderful guest is for the day, man, I have to say thank you to all the genuine support that we've been receiving. Um, not only just for the the video and the audio podcast, but it, everybody who's been supporting the merch and the brand and allowing the brand to grow, allowing the brand to flourish, um, allowing the brand to just get different eyes on it, man. It's been a lot of genuine support, and I really appreciate that. I never take that for granted. Um, I'm very much appreciative of the community that LYP has allowed us to um, to grow and allow allow us to serve. So thank you to everybody who has been supporting us. Um, for those who do not know, if this is your first time joining us here at LYP, um, the podcast space specifically is a platform that I created to be able to highlight entrepreneurs and black entrepreneurs first. Um, no, we did not only just speak to entrepreneurs, but the reason that we um, speak with entrepreneurs, entre entrepreneurs specifically is because me, myself, I am currently in the process of becoming a full-time entrepreneur, um, transitioning out of a traditional nine to five into the role of an entrepreneur. So it is important for me to be able to highlight the individuals who are um, serving as entrepreneurs and establishing themselves as business owners, but also being able to highlight their backstories because their backstories gives us insight into the work that they're doing today. And the reason that I specifically chose entrepreneurs is because the mindset that an entrepreneur has to have live by certain type of principles that I try to live my life by. Um, and by having these authentic and organic conversations with entrepreneurs and different people, um, we able to tap into the mindset of these individuals um, that ultimately help serve us all. So that's what the LYP brand is all about. That's what the platform and the podcast is all about. And the way that we do that is we have organic and authentic conversations with different individuals. Um, this young man who I have one right now is a testament of being your true self, having infectious energy, having a great spirit, great light. I'm so excited to have this dude on. Um, as soon as y'all hear him, man, y'all gonna hear his energy, y'all gonna hear his spirit jump right out of the, the audio, right out to the screen. Um, Devin Clark, man. Appreciate you, man. How Appreciate you feeling, you man? Me. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm just excited to be here, man. So, man, let me let me just tell people a little bit, you know, who, who this guy is, <laughs> man. You know, he's a he's an entrepreneur. He's a real estate investor. He's a youth motivational speaker. This guy, man, he does a little bit of everything. Um, and I, I I'm I'm excited to kind of really touch into his backstory because just kind of like the guest that we had on here earlier. I remember this little this this young guy when he was a little dude, man. And to see your growth and evolution to see what it is today is beautiful. I appreciate you, it. You man. know what I'm saying? Thank so, you. 
You 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 very welcome. So you know we want to be able to highlight you a little bit, man. Share some light on you. Um, so the way that we gonna do that is, man. Let's jump into your story a little bit. I want to jump into the beginning a little bit. I want to kind of touch on some, some real estate stuff as well. But like, I want to talk about you. Okay. All yeah. right. Yep. Let's so do let's it. so let's start at the very beginning. But before we even get into that, man, how are you genuinely? You know, I'm I'm trying to be intentional about asking people. How are they checking in with them? Like, how are you mentally? How are you spiritually right now? How are you genuinely? You know, that's a real question, man, because a couple of years ago, you know, coming straight out of college, I probably would have lied, you know, with that question. I would have been like, I'm good, you know, because you're so used to telling the world that, you know, you're good. Facts. You know, that's just what people expect. But mm -hmm. I'm honestly in a very, you know, happy place right now. I'm in a given season right now. Um, I just feel like God is blessing me heavily um, because I'm in, a, I'm in a given spirit. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a, I'm in a given season. And I don't know, I'm just feeling like, you know, the, the world is sort of giving me what I've been putting out there. So, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, you know, life is good. Yeah. yeah life, oh, is, life is a blessing right now. That's that's dope, man. Wonderful. So, yeah, man, let's let's jump into your story a little bit, man. Um, You're a little bit younger than I am, but we, you know, from from the same area, from the same city. Again, I remember you, you know, as, as a young dude. But like when you reflect back on growing up here in Akron, just being a kid, reflecting, man, like what what are some of the things that stand out to you when you reflect and like, man, when I think back to my childhood and just life growing up, what are some of the things that come to mind for you? So my life was a little different. Um, so my parents always kind of kept me out the way. I never went to the school that was in my neighborhood. So I grew up in West Akron. So my home school was Cross Elementary. Then it would have been um, whatever Bookdale's Middle School is and then Bookdale High School. I never went to any of the local schools. Um, I ended up going to Essex for elementary school. So I was out there by the Firestone mm -hmm, kids. Mm -hmm. And then I went to a Miller South School for the visual and performing arts, mm -hmm. um, which is where I kind of felt like I got my voice. Okay, you know, I kind of okay. learned how to speak a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know, I'm, looking back, um, I kind of felt like that school kind of introduced me to kind of the world as it is. You know what I'm saying? And kind of like the corporate world and, you know, kind of, you know, the workplace world. And um, I got exposed to a lot of different things at that school. Got mm -hmm. exposed to people with some money, got exposed to people without money, um, and just got to see how different kids was living life. You know, some pe some kids, you know, was coming from these big houses and it was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I grew up on the West Side. So real modest house, um, modest neighborhood. Um, pops, mom and pops both had a good job. Um, dad worked at the post office. So yeah, dad yeah, was yeah. seeing, you know, some good money. Mm -hmm. Mom worked in the schools. I think that's how we met. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. through, through my mom. Mm -hmm. but. Um, you know, it was it was cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Life growing up was cool. And then for high school, I went to Akron Early College. Okay. So again, I was out the way. I was around a different set of you know students, and it was just different. Yeah, yeah that, see that see that's dope. And like, well, first, what was your um, what was your your performing arts? It what was you, drama. Drama. Yeah. So, so kind of acted. acted. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. I can, I can see I'm not that an little, actor though. I can yeah. see that a little bit though. So yep. you never you never try to pursue that any any way at all and after? Not really, man. I never thought I would actually use any of it. Um, you know, when I started doing YouTube, it was weird that you know here I am, you know, kind of on camera, but I never ever dreamt of even doing anything related to acting or being on camera or none of that. That was never my gig. Okay, so going going from Miller South into Akron Early College again, man. Those are those are what people would consider um, alternative schools. Right, right. Um, performing arts. Yep. Akron Early College is self-explanatory. Self it's a, um, what, is, it a is it a trade school? Kind of like a trade, like getting into college early, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. Yep. So very similar. Yeah, so um, my guy, Darrell, man, we were actually having a conversation a little bit earlier. Um, he went to STEM. And we were just talking about some of the like the values and some of the um, the pros of him going to a, a STEM school, you know, science, technology, engineering, math. For those who do not know, right? What were some of the benefits? Again, reflecting, looking back on it, that you think going to Akron Early College gave you? I felt like Akron Early College just kind of forced me to mature very soon. Hmm. So you know, while most of my friends, when we jumped from Miller South, I was either I was either going to Firestone or I was going to Akron Early College, mm -hmm. and I ended up choosing Akron Early College because. From a young age, my dad always instilled in me like the desire to want a lot out of life, mm. right? And at the time, that meant materialistic stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to have the nice car. I wanted to have a nice motorcycles. I wanted to be able to go on vacation. I wanted a nice house. I wanted to be able to live a dream. Yeah. So the way I looked at it back then was, okay, if I go to this early college program, that's sooner that I can touch a bag to start being able to play a little bit. Right, right, right. So that's that's really why I went to Akron Early College. I wanted to basically graduate from college a little earlier mm. so that I could start making some money. But I kind of felt like it, it challenged me because here I am, 14 years old, sitting in classes with, you know, college students. They range from 18 to 65. So 
I'm sitting in these classes and they looking at me kind of different. So it's forcing me to have to act a kind of a certain kind of way, you know. Yeah. I didn't want to be like that little kid in the room, so I wanted to, you know, sit in there, you know, like I was meant to be there. Right, right, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's see see that's that's dope, man. And again, when I was talking to Darrell a little bit earlier, um the majority of people are not exposed to these type of things when right. you're talking about a STEM school or acting early college. Right, right. Like, you know, and I'm not just talking about from a social standpoint. I'm talking about the skills that you guys are, you know, right. um, re- receiving when you in when he, when you in these buildings. And ultimately you will see some type of correlation, you know, in your adult life. You know, Absolutely. at least at least when you were aware of it. it. It really made me to be focused, mm. right? Because I mean here I am, you know what I'm saying? I was always like a decent student, mm-hmm. right? I always got good grades, but mm-hmm. When I was around a bunch of other students who were all super smart, it was like, okay, how can I separate myself from the pack? Mm. So I got real focused and I was just about my business. I had this goal from early on in high school. I wanted to go to college, but the trick was I didn't want to take out no debt for college mm. because I knew the debt would end up being something holding me back, you know, after I graduated. So that was that was like my goal. So it kept me driven and get me focused. And I mean, it all still applies to this day. I'm still driven. I'm still focused. And I wake up every day and get it. Yeah, that's dope, man. Yeah, that, that's dope. See, like part now part of my part of my process in preparing for these in these interviews and these conversations, I got to do my due diligence and do a little right, bit of right. digging. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I talk to some people close to you. OK. And one of the things that they said is that like, you know, and it's interesting that you specifically said the word focus. OK. Because one of the things that they t- said is that, you know, Ever since Devin was a little kid, you know, he always had a, a, um he always had a presence about being focused and handling his business and knowing who he was. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's a powerful that is a powerful statement and sentiment to say about a young person. Right. And I, I want to know like for yourself, um, what do you think the benefits are of just like, you know, of being focused, but being focused as, as a young person and how that's translated to what you're doing today. Right. I'm, I'm really happy you asked that, man, because I feel like a lot of people look at focus like, you know, when you focused or when you got to go or when you're working towards something, you ain't having no fun. <laughs> so I just want to clear the air. I had like an amazing childhood. I had a super legendary upbringing. High school was was cool. I didn't do like the normal like I wasn't I didn't play sports. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't a sports dude. Mm-hmm. I didn't play ball. But um, I did have fun. You know, I got a car at 16. So, you know, I was able to go on dates, have fun, right, kick right, it, right. mingle, get to experience that side of life. Um, my dad was crazy. Somehow I ended up getting a motorcycle at 16. <laughs> right, right. So here I am. I'm kicking it with all my dad's boys. Okay. So here we are on Saturday, just like today, you know, um, we going out and we kicking it, you know, how, you know, grown yeah, yeah, man kicking. Yeah, 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 so here yeah, yeah. I am. Instead of, you know, they talking about the little football game or whatever that happened over the weekend. I'm hearing my dad and his boys have they grown man conversations. So hearing that, you know, when you're hearing stuff like that and that's what you're trying to be, you know, it sort of gets all the other thoughts out. You know, you, you got a goal that you're working towards and that's what you're trying to get. You're trying to, I was trying to be a man. Mm. Yeah. So mm. I was, I was real fortunate, man. I had a dad in my life who woke, he, he wakes up every day still to this day. Sometimes I hate the fact that he does that now, knowing what I know about, you know, investing in all of that type stuff. But I have a dad who wakes up every day and goes to work, mm. right? And he works hard. Like he's been like that since he was my age. And he taught me that hard work can get you what you want. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was fortunate to be able to grow up seeing that. And that kind of put that focus in me. It was like, all right, if you focus on something, if you work hard, you can get whatever you want. And that's kind of what it's turned out for me. Yeah, dope, dope, dope. Now, listen, man, we we're coming off of one of the most historical years that that we've ever had. You know what I'm saying? Like 2020, the pandemic life in general i know for myself it was one of the most transformative years that i ever experienced and i know i talk tell my wife all the time 10 years down the line we're going to look back at the year 2020 and say man that was the year that kind of like stamped us as a marriage it was one of the years that was like although it was tumultuous for what it was we're going to look back on it and be like man we glad we had that year but it still was a lot going on you know lot, right so like for you man personally what do you th- what do you think you learned about yourself mentally, spiritually, you know, just just about yourself due to what you had to experience personally with, within the pandemic? Right. So 2020 was an interesting year, but I feel like in order to understand my 2020, we need to jump back a couple of years. Okay. So I ended up going to that Akron Early College program, graduated, finished up at the University of Akron. Now, mind you, since I went to early college, I only got two years of college left. So my first year of college after high school graduation, I got an internship with this big trucking and transportation business. I don't really care to say the name, but it was a cool internship that was paying me a lot of money. 
and they was offering a lot when I graduated. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, you know, I'm like, man, this is everything I've been working for. Everything yeah. my dad been instilling in me, you know, I'm gonna get the good job and I'm gonna be able to go out and live my life. I'm gonna be able to go out, get all the stuff that I wanted. I'm gonna be able to move out. I'm gonna be able to get the nice car, get mm -hmm. the motorcycles and kick it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really all I was thinking about. Yeah, I was yeah, ready yeah. to kick it. Right. I had been working hard <laughs> all these years. I was ready to uh, enjoy the fruits of my labor. So I finally graduated a year later, got the job with the big trucking and transportation business. Um, they gave me a salary of 46,000 right out the gate, plus commission, commission range, probably about 10,000 for the year. But not only that, the crazy kicker was I got a brand new 2018 Toyota Camry Ooh, SE. It's lit. White, tinted windows. It's lit. <laughs> Man, they thought I was a company owner pulling up every day. Right, right, right. So, you know, they had my mind as a 20 year old fresh out of college coming off of all this hard work that I had been putting in they had me confused because from the outside looking in, it was like, dang, this young man is doing his thing. But on the inside, I realized that my day to day wasn't what I expected, mm. right? So 2018, 2019, that's my battle. I'm waking up, I'm going to this job, it's doing what I needed to do. I ended up getting the motorcycles, I ended up getting that new car, and I ended up getting that house, but there was an issue. Like it was, it was still like, it wasn't giving me that feeling, like that anticipation that I was hoping it was gonna give me when I finally reached that point, right? So my, I was kind of left feeling depressed, kind of left feeling empty. And, you know, I was just kind of confused. I'm like, I did all this work, graduated, went to college like everybody told me to do. And I'm not really happy with what I'm waking up and doing every day. Mm -hmm. So I was praying about it, going through a bunch. I ended up shooting my shot for totally like crazy opportunities. I was even about to become a police officer. I took the police test. I was trying to just get out of that opportunity. Mm. God slowed me down. <clears throat> and um, summer of 2019, so a year into that position, I was in a position I had saved up enough money um, to buy a second property. Now, I wanted to buy that second property because I knew that second property was gonna enable me to quit that job that I was unhappy with, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I end up being able to find a property. You know, after a long summer of looking, we finally found a property, um, moved into the property, and right after I bought that property, this is the very end of 2019, I had had the property <laughs> for maybe two weeks, mm -hmm. right? Now, I didn't have a bunch of reserves saved. No, this is horrible, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't have a bunch of reserves saved. I was literally just walking on faith. I quit the job at Penske. I shouldn't have said the company. <laughs> <laughs> I quit the job. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, I, I, I literally was walking on faith. I, one of my customers when I was at Penske was an Amazon delivery um, service provider. So I reached out to him and I was like, hey, you know, I need to get out of this position. Can I come drive for you to keep some money coming in so I can pay my bills? And he was like, cool. So he hooked me up with a job. So quit the job, driving for Amazon. And now, boom, 2020 hit. So beginning of 2020, had the job driving for uh, Amazon, right? So I'm driving. At that point, I had just got my real estate license. And if I'm not mistaken, you had just started this podcast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so it's mm -hmm. interesting because I kind of felt like God was giving me a sign with your podcast because... I left because my purpose wasn't being fulfilled, right? Mm, mm. So I wanted to get my real estate license and I wanted to be free from that situation so that I could ultimately help other people. I kind of felt like that's what God was putting on my heart. So when I quit and I started doing all this stuff and then I saw your podcast, I started listening. I'm like, man, I feel like I'm living my, pur I'm living my purpose, mm -hmm, you know? And mm -hmm. I think I had reached out. Yeah, I was like, yeah. hey, you know, I'm trying to get on. I don't know if it's now or yeah, later, you know, yeah. but I want to get on your podcast and speak. And you was like, okay, and I'm happy you didn't at that time because mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, I didn't really have, you know, my story to where it's at now. But, um, you know, it was interesting because I felt like God was leading me in the right direction, right? So then let's fast forward a couple months later into 2020, the pandemic hit, of course, and things sort of slowed down. I had just got my real estate license. If you don't know when you sell real estate, if you don't sell anything, you don't eat. Right. <laughs> so I wasn't really selling anything. So the only money I was making was at the job, at the Amazon delivery job that I had. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just staying, I'm doing what I need to do. So I'm going to work every day, hustling. I was selling a, a few houses here and there. You know what I'm saying? I sold one, one month, the next, one the next month, one, and it was just sort of like one, one, one. So it was like a little money was coming in just to keep things, keep things going, right? So then summer of 2020 hits and if you remember 2020, 2020 was just a year of creativity, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it was just all creative. So the year before, um, I had started a YouTube channel and I started posting little videos. Just, um, I really started the YouTube channel to educate and inspire people. I wanted to teach people about investing in real estate. I wanted to teach people about building credit. That's really why I started it. But it ended up turning into basically like me talking about that stuff, but me really enjoying my lifestyle of the motorcycles. So I started posting videos kind of regularly and my subscriber base started growing kind of fast. And it was like, this is kind of crazy. And then I got my first check from YouTube and it was like, 
people really make money on YouTube. And then it was like, dang, like, could this be like a, a full-time gig? But then it slowed down and I was like, all right, wait, back to reality a little bit right now. Um, but 2020 just really taught me, man. If 2020 had a, uh, had a theme, 2020's theme for me would just be just believing in yourself and trusting that God is going to pave the way. And that's exactly what he did, man. I stayed faithful. I hustled at Amazon, man. Some days I went in, they gave me 200 stops. I did what I had to do. I didn't want to be doing that, but I was a lot happier doing that than being miserable in that situation I was getting a year before. Yeah. I was selling a few houses. It was a blessing because I was selling like all my best friends' houses. Mm -hmm. So here I am, you know, being that <clears throat> educator and inspirer. I'm educating and inspiring my friends on how they can go out and start building wealth for their families. And then not only that, but I got the YouTube channel that I'm also being able to make an impact on people's lives. So I kind of felt like God was just saying like, hey, this is a season of just trusting me, trusting that everything is going to be cool. I got you. You live in your purpose. It may not be to the extent that you dream to live in your purpose. You're not... You might not be reaching millions of people, but you're living your purpose and you got to keep trusting the process. And that's what I did for the remainder of 2020. Like I said, I sold a house here or there. Um, the YouTube channel continued to go. And then at the end of 2020, I was blessed with an opportunity to put my real estate license on and active <clears throat> to work full time in real estate um, for an opportunity that, of course, put a little bit more money in my pocket and enabled me to keep um, going with the real estate investments. So yeah, so that's <clears throat> it was crazy, man. Nah, it was a lot. Nah, nah, yeah, nah, it was nah. crazy. Man. It's a lot, but it's but it, but it's powerful. So it's it's a couple things you said that I, I don't want to skip over. Yeah. Um, how long into that job were you working before you realized, all right, I'm not fulfilled doing this? How so how long had you been working? I told there? you I worked as an intern. So I started in 2017, but 2018 is when I started full time once I graduated. It's probably about two three months, and I was like, man, this ain't. So it. you knew early. I knew early. I knew that. I was chasing money. Mm. I knew that I was chasing money. And I knew that's when I had messed up. I was chasing the materialistic items. And once I realized it, it was already too late. You know, I'd already had the street glide payment. The street glide payment is $370. If y'all don't know what that is, that's a Harley Davidson street glide, the big body, you know, like the Cadillac of motorcycles, basically. Hey, my, my guy is a motorcycle. He just, he's a motorcycle savant, it's man. Crazy. He's, he's, yeah, he's crazy. He's different with the bikes. Yeah. <clears throat> so but I had already had that payment. And then I turned around, I bought a house. I bought a single family home and when you got a single family home, you know, if you don't make the mortgage, you, mortgage. Yeah, you get, yeah. So at that point it was too late. It was like, all right, I got to hustle to get through this. So that's what I did. So, okay. So when you realize, all right, I'm chasing money, I'm, yeah. I'm unfulfilled. Did you have anybody to turn to, to like, tell them like, what, what was your, what was your thought process and how did you ultimately make the decision to say, okay. I have to take action because it's, it's, it's one thing to be aware of it, which is super important and super powerful in itself right. to be aware and say, okay, I'm not fulfilled. I'm chasing money. This is not what I signed up for. Right. 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 That's, that's one thing. Yeah. It's another thing to say, all right, here I am and I'm going to take the steps. Yeah. So like, what was your, what were the steps that ultimately led you to say, all right, I got to I got to do something about this. Right. So, you know the definition of insanity, right? A lot <laughs> of people yeah, over over. Yeah, doing the same thing over and over again, thinking that something's going to change. So that's how it was for the first couple months. First couple months, I was going to work, talking to my coworkers. And, you know, a lot of us felt the same way. Mm. A lot of us didn't really do nothing about it, but a lot of us felt the same way. But after a while of that, it was like, all right, we've been doing this for a couple months. Ain't nothing changing. I'm still here. You know, I'm still waking up every day depressed. I'm not wanting to go do nothing because I know on Monday morning, I got to go back to this gig that I don't want to go to. So... I realized I came across actually, so two things, you know, Jay Morrison mm -hmm. came across a Jay Morrison real estate video. Mm -hmm. He was talking about living in a duplex, living in one side, renting house out hacking. the other house hacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, this actually sound kind of smart. If I could do this, that would really cut my living expenses. That would get rid of my street glide payment because I could use that single family house as a rental to pay for my street glide. So it was kind of like killing two birds with one stone. So I was like, if I could make that work and buy a duplex and house hack, I might be okay, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. came across that video and then I came across um, this Gary Vee video. Hmm. And he was talking about success and he was talking about happiness. And in the video, he was basically just talking about how a lot of people define success, how I was defining success, based off of what they had, based off of the house, based off of their salary, based off of the car they drove, based off of what the toys was in their garage, right? And if I wanted to truly be successful and wake up every day and be happy, which is how he defines success, I had to change that. Mm. So at that point, like I said, I, I was trying to get out, but I understood that I had to buy that duplex in order to get out. 
you know, in, in order to keep everything. I yeah. could have sold yeah. and, you know, step back and, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, got a little apartment somewhere and figured it out, but that ain't really what I wanted to do. I wanted to continue growing and I wanted to push myself because I've always been focused. Mm -hmm. I've always been driven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, it wasn't easy. It ain't easy when you're waking up every day not feeling it. Yeah, that's 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 so important, man. I, and the reason I, I, I really want to highlight that, that process yeah. and, like, you know, where you were in that moment is because... In my opinion, I don't think that that's too far fetched for the majority of people, man. Right, I, man. I think the majority of people, um, out of out of survival, yeah. you know, and out yep. of necessity, a lot of us go through the day to day, just going through the motions, right, you know, because right. we got bills, yep. we got family to take care yep, of, man. Yep. You know, we don't know what else. It's reality for most people. It, it, yeah, and that's, it, that's, that's it the is. sad. That's the sad reality. And you know, I went to my dad when I was going through it. And he didn't understand. Mm. You know, I went to my dad, like I said, he's worked 33 years for the same job, worked hard, makes good money. But I went to him and I was like, Pops, I'm not feeling this every day. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't asking for help or nothing like that. I was just saying, Dad, it was just being you know, yeah, like, I'm not feeling this. Like, this ain't what I signed up for. This yeah. ain't what I thought it was going to be like. Yeah. Um, and I don't really want to be in this situation no more. And he was like, are you crazy? You know what I'm saying? You, you made it, man. You know, you got the good job, man. You got the nice car. You got the hot, like, and it was like, Whoa, reality check, you know, and that's when I realized that I had to take my own path, man. And that's that's when things changed. That's when the real estate investing started getting taken very serious. And I started understanding that, you know, assets over liabilities is a real statement. You mm -hmm. know, if I had enough asset income coming in that I could pay for the liabilities and pay for my other bills, my little lifestyle bills, um, I would be free. You know, so that that was the goal. Yeah. yeah. What were your dreams as a kid? What you what you want to do? What did you see for yourself as as a child? You know, as a kid, when I look back at all my dreams, I was always chasing money. So of course, I wanted to be a doctor. Why? Make money. Um, in high school, I wanted to be a nurse and anesthetist, or however you pronounce it. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason being is because I wouldn't have to go to school as long as a doctor, but I could still make like a buck fifty a year. And I was like, you know, I'd be cool off of that, right? Not even knowing that I would be cool off way less than that, you know. But um, those were like my dreams. My dreams really were never like, you know, I never had the rapper dream. I never had the ball player dream. I was always a little dude. You know, I was always a little dude. The girls would always be like, nah, you too short. You know, so I ain't never had that, you know. Right, right. But um, yeah, my dreams was really, I wanted to be able to kick it with my dad and all his boys on the bikes and eventually have my own crew of the guys out on the bikes and, you know, us have the nice cars, you know, and just be able to, just be able to live a dream, you yeah. know, be able to be young and live. So like... <clears throat> So that 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 goes us to where I want to what what I want to ask you now. Yeah, you mentioned it, man. You did reach out to me about being on the podcast did, last yeah. year. Yes, sir. I went back and looked at that message because it was it was interesting and it always stayed in the back of my mind because you didn't just people ask me to be on the podcast all the time. Right, you know what I'm saying. I got to be selective with who I allow on here. But just even at the time when you asked me, I had literally did have a lot of guests already lined up. Right, but right. when you asked me, you said, "Hey, I would love to be a guest." And I would love to talk about um, defining your own definition for success for your life. Yeah. And it wasn't just that you asked to be on it. It was what you wanted to talk about that stuck in my mind. Really? Okay. And I was like, okay, I'm going to revisit this. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? When the time when the time is right. Right. So, like, okay, you said, man, your dreams was connected to, you know, materialism. It was connected to, you know, this facade, right. really, of, right. you know, of what makes people successful, what makes people happy exactly what success looks like you know right. what we are um what, what we're showing every day you know what i'm saying in, in mass media right right but tell me now man today a couple years down the line right. man you know what is your definition you know of, of success today you know it sounds very cliche and it sounds you know probably wet to yeah. most people but mm -hmm. really success in my definition of how i wake up and how i define success is waking up if i had a good day <laughs> if i can win the day I'm successful, mm. right? If I can wake up and be happy, not be feeling some type of way, depressed about, you know, the situation I'm in, you know, that's successful. And it sounds like very, you know, kiddish. It sounds very immature. But at the end of the day, the most successful people are the happy ones. You know what I'm saying? So let me tell you what it sounds like to me. Yeah. It sounds healthy. Really? Yep. <laughs> very. And, you know, when I was at that job and I was waking up, I had never had any health problems. I was always pushing myself through school, but that was just normal. Everybody was pushing themselves. But when I was waking up every day, I knew that if I would have did that for the next 10, 15 years, I probably would health, have health problems because some of my coworkers, they was having health problems. They was having like panic attacks and all this crazy stuff. And I was like, man, like if I stay in this situation, it's going to be me. And I'm, I'm, I was, I've always been like a genuinely very happy dude very contagious energy type of dude 
And in that time of my life, it wasn't none of that. I wasn't really trying to be seen. So, man, <clears throat> I was just telling the last guest who I had on here, you know, my journey into entrepreneurship, it begun with being intentional about healing. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I, I've, I've always kind of been, for the most part, pretty self-aware. Okay. You know, I've, I've always been intentional about being able to look at myself. Right. You know, I've, I've always had a skill set of being able to, like, you know, self-reflect, you know, kind of look at my own self-development. But I've never had any idea of, like, what real self-development and what real help and healing really look like. Right. You know, so for me personally, it started with going to therapy and it started with me saying asking myself some tough questions number one you know what are some things that i want for myself that i didn't get as a kid right you know the first thing that i knew that i wanted was listen i knew i wanted to have a healthy relationship a healthy marriage you know ultimately when i had children i wanted to be able to have a certain type of emotional um security and emotional stability okay. and emotional intelligence That's to give real. to my children right like I, I knew that so for me, it started with going to therapy, man. Okay. And one of the things that I've learned and value from going to therapy and, you know, working on my healing is that happiness, happiness is about what you just said, which is about being able to be content with moments, right. you know, right. and a collection of moments. Yep. When you are, when we are focused on the future and when we reflect on the past, that's when stress comes about. Right. And when stress comes about, that ultimately impacts our mind, right. but it also impacts our physical and our body, right. which slowly deteriorates us, right. which means that we cannot live our true selves. That's so real, man. So, so. <laughs> that is so real. So, like, man, one of the things that, one of the reasons why I want to have you on here and have young people on here specifically is because I'm now able to understand that for our parents yeah. and that generation out of pure survival majority of the times they didn't have the luxury of being able to look at life the way that you and i do right now right right and that's not necessarily a bad thing right you you, you know you know what i'm saying i feel like they weren't exposed to it as much i feel Bingo. like the internet age you know and us having social media we're able to see so many different people's lifestyles yeah and we're able to see people that are happy we're able to pe see people that are getting a lot of money and working like slaves we're able to see people who all they care about is money. Yep. Um, and I just feel like in my life, being able to see everything has shown me like, wait, I ain't got to take that same path that my dad took. Or I ain't <clears> got to <throat> take the same path that my grandparents took. I can create my own path. Yeah. I can wake up. I, I can have all the money. I can have all the stuff. But I can also be happy. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I can figure out a way to have everything I want out of my life. I have to define it. I got to define what it is I want out of my life. And if I know what I want, I can get it. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's your boy, John Morgan. Listen, man, right now, as y'all can see, man, I got on the new Leah Purpose podcast merch, man. It's going crazy right now, the t-shirts. I got the dad hats. People always hit me up. John, man, where can I get it? How can I grab your stuff? You got a website? You got a site? You got a site? You got a site? How can I grab it? I'm here to tell you, yes, we do have a site. All right? That site is www.lypp.org. O-R-G. Again, it's www lypp.org go to that website right now man you can find our our uh you can find a link to the youtube channel you can find a link to the audio platform but you also can find where you can shop and grab your merch right now again man check check us out we got the tees going crazy right now the dad hats expect to see some new products on that site Go right now, www.lypp.org again, man. A lot of y'all been hitting me up, asking me about this link and this site. It's available. So do yourself a favor, go through, support, shout with your boy, spend some money with your boy. I know some of y'all still got that PPE money. Come spend some with your boy, man. Peace. Tell me, man, when you did... Cause you you said man, pops didn't understand it. I came came to pops, vented to him, let him know like you know you you were honest about that. Right, that right. Is, that in itself has to be applauded. You went to your father like a man and said, "Listen, man, this is where I'm at, and right. I'm not feeling it." But even just even outside of your your parents, or maybe even if it is your parents, how many people push back? You 20 years old, you making 50 grand, right, bro. Right. 
what else you want me to say? Like, right. you, what yeah. else you want? What else do people, you know, expect you to look at? But when you saying, man, I'm not feeling it. I have another path. I got to walk my own path. Yeah, that autom- that automatically comes with resistance. Right. Right. You know, <laughs> that comes with spiritual warfare at your head, man. People are going to push back at that. Right. So how many people push back against? You know, it, you walk uh, in your own path. A lot of people at the job surprisingly push back mm. because a lot of people was like, you know what? Even though it's like this, it won't always be like ah, this. But ah, my thing is, stick it in there, yeah, Devin. <laughs> like anytime somebody is giving me advice, I'm always looking at where they're at, and yeah. I always ask myself a simple question. I'm like, all right, this person's giving me advice. I'm always gonna listen. I'm gonna hear what this person has to say, but I'm gonna ask myself that question: Would I trade places with this individual? <laughs> right? And here I am. I'm looking at these cats at the job. And they're making, you know, a buck fifty. You know, some of them, some of them are making a buck fifty. Yeah. But I'm looking at how long it took them to get to that point. And a lot of them are thirty years in, got the big belly. You know what I'm saying? I see them having to travel two hundred nights out the year, and I'm like, man, like <laughs> this is all life has came to. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I did all this to get to that, would I be happy? And if I'm not happy now, then I extremely would be happy then. Um. So I got a look, a lot of pushback from the job. Like, man, like. You made it, you know what I'm saying? You you're doing well, you know, you're you're inspiring others. You know, they're trying to sell me, you know. And I had to realize that, nah, like I gotta do my own thing. So I remember one time I actually, I believe I went to my pastor. We was doing this men's group at church. And normally I wouldn't have went to something like that, right? A men's group at church, just because I had never went and my dad never went to nothing like that. So this was different. This was one of them, you know, things of me basically finding my own path as a man. So they was having a men's group. And before it started one day, I was kind of telling Pastor where I was at. And I go to City of Joy, Pastor Maceo Smith. Mm-hmm. Shout and, out uh, Maceo. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I was kind of just telling him. And he was like, look, man, if you're not, a, if you're not happy, you know what I'm saying? You, you need to, you know, figure out a different path. And through his sermons, I realized that I didn't really have faith. Mm-hmm. I was always betting on myself. Mm-hmm. Always, man. Like, all, all the way through school, I could always bet on myself. I was going to get it done, and I could do it. Dev could do it. And I always believed, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always believed, like, God had me. But I knew that my hard work could get me there. And I never trusted that, no, nah, like, it's only so much you can control. You got to let God handle the rest. And when I realized that, that's when I was like, you know what? What's the worst that can happen? I was like, I asked myself this million dollar question, man. I said, how many times has God let me fall? <laughs> and when I thought about it, I was like, man, I ain't hit the ground one time. What am I so scared of? I ain't hit the ground one time. He ain't never let me fall, man. So I was like, if that's the case. Let me just jump. Let me just jump out this airplane. I'm going to have my parachute on my back. And if I fail, I can always get another corporate job. <laughs> but if I don't have to do that, who, you know what I'm saying? Who knows what it could turn into? So that's, that's what it was. <clears throat> man, you dropping gems, man. I hope you all paying attention to what this young dude is saying, man. Don't let some of this stuff go over your head, man. He dropping a lot of, a lot of gems, man. This is a young dude dropping them on y'all. So I hope you all listening. Listen, again, you said a few things that I can't, I can't uh, skip over. Um, the first the first thing that you said, you know, about seeing the people at the job, you looking at them, you asking them, would I want to trade places with this person? Right, right. right. One thing that I've been paying attention myself is, all right, when I look at people, I have to see a couple things in them. Like, you know, I, I'm looking for a couple things when I when I'm like just people watching. If I'm just out and about, just right, moving, right. right, just trying to be present in the moment. Right, right. One of the things that I have been intentionally trying to do is, all right, can I see this person living? Right. Living. Right. Not existing. Right. Living. living. Right. There's a difference. That's a big difference. Nicki Minaj <laughs> said it a moment for life. It's, this, <laughs> there's a big difference between living and existing. Right, right. And when you pay attention, you can see most people are just existing. And that's what I realized at the job. I was like, these people are just literally here. Now, now, what I also understand with that being said is that, you know, um, I empathize with people who are existing and not living because I was once in that, in, that, in those perfect shoes, right. you know, a, a, a lot of times. And I understand that, um, I understand it is the conditions that, you know, ultimately make people have to feel like they have to exist and not live right you right. know again out of survival man out of right. out of fear i would i would challenge you to say that most people exist mm-hmm. most people don't live and that's that's the savvy i feel like that's why it's so important for platforms like this so important for platforms like my youtube channel some people they don't see anybody living everybody around them is doing what they have to do 
in order to get the bills paid, right? They don't see people actually getting to dig deeper into life, you know, which is most important life. And one of the other things you just said, man, is that, you know, when you talk to your pastor, um, you had to come to the realization that you weren't living by faith. Right, right. <laughs> I, I had um, I had Coach Drew Joyce on the podcast a few episodes ago, and he talked about <clears throat> when he was leaving his corporate job, he said one thing that he communicated to his wife and just communicated to his family and whatnot is that, listen, God is going to provide for us. Right. You know, I have to live by faith. <laughs> and he laughed. He was like, you know, um, a lot of people talk about living by faith. A lot of people talk about trusting God and right. like, you know, believing in God to, you know, to carry out his plans for them, you know, for, for the betterment of their life or whatnot. Right. But it is completely different to live faith by faith, man. And, you know, it's funny when I left the job, man. So I left in November of 2019. So right before 2020. And when I left, I told you I didn't really have a bunch of reserves set aside. I maybe had a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred dollars set aside. Now, mind you, at that point, I had three rental units. So three doors, one that I lived in and then two other doors that were rented out to tenants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at that point. You know, it was a challenge. I, I was literally walking on faith. I was praying every day like, God, please don't take me out of the game. I know that I should have stayed a little while longer. <laughs> I should have saved a little bit more money. But this is where but I'm I, at. This is where I'm at. And I'm, I'm trusting you and I'm <clears> believing. <throat> and he got me through, man. And it's crazy because in 2020, while most people were, you know, just living life, you know, doing whatever, watching Netflix, taking the time in and just chill. We were still growing, you know, we were still able to, even though we were barely making like, I had a friend who was like, man, back in 2020, man, it looked like you was living, man. You said you was only making how much? And I'm like, bro, walking on faith. But we were still able to buy another investment property in September of 2020, bro, that now has like 50 or $60,000 worth of equity in it, man. Right, right, right. Because we were walking on faith. So when you believe in yourself and you believe in God, like it's, it's, it's a wrap, bro. So it's a wrap. What'd you take from those experiences? What'd you take from... Having to walk on faith? Yeah, what'd you take from that? Learning, like learning to actually realize, like when I asked myself that question, like has God ever failed me? And just believe, like really asking myself like that common sense question, like has God ever let me fall? And realizing that the answer was no. And then when I challenged it, when I quit with very little money set aside, just, you know, if something would've happened, I might've been put out the game. You know, hopefully it would've went into foreclosure, but you never know. But God wasn't gonna let it go that far. So that's what, I, that's what I learned. So now, if I'm dealing with a challenge, it's like, you know what? I'm thinking back to that time now. I have the position to be able to be a little bit smarter, right? But I still know that God has my back, no matter what. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's powerful, man. Yep, um, so that's, that's real. <clears throat> you mentioned a couple times, man, your, your YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, again, like I said, man, in part of doing my research and my due diligence, I went and dove into a lot of your, you know, your content. Yep. Um, a lot of bike stuff. Yeah. You yep. know, a lot of vlogging with you and your lady and yeah. things like that. Yep. Um, I watched a 20 minute video that you did where you were just kind of talking about some of the things we talking about here. Yeah. Um, yep. but one like when I was just scrolling, I'm like, I'm like, dang, man, he got a lot of views, a lot of comments. Like it's a lot of you know engagement. Yeah. You know, on, on, on this page. Walk me through like the process of growing your YouTube channel, right? And walk me through the process of like, yeah, like you said, man, you making money from this right. from, from this YouTube channel. Right. Walk me through all of that. Well, first, shout out to Don, man. You mentioned her, so yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, shout yeah, out to, yeah. my, shout shout out to the my, lady. And yeah. she was there through it all, right, man. No like, doubt. Through, hey, through it all. She she was that person you asked who I was venting to. That was that was really who who I had to vent to. Got but, it, got it. So YouTube channel, I started back in 2018. I started when I you know first kind of realized like, all right, I ain't really feeling this job. So I started the YouTube channel kind of as like an outlet. Mm -hmm. I was like, if I can give some game to other people, you know, and stuff that I'm trying to do, you know, maybe, you know, that'll make me feel a little bit better. So 2018, I posted two videos. First one was how I bought my first house at 20 years old, got like 30 views. Second one, how to build your credit score up to like 700, got like 30 views. So I'm like, okay, cool. This is cool. A few people saw it, helped a few people, whatever. 2019, I started posting a little bit more. So I started introducing the bikes a little bit, but still trying to give game like to the younger, like I was trying to really speak to like high school age students. But, you know, it really wasn't catching a lot of traction. I really wasn't getting as many views as I was really hoping. So I started introducing the bikes a little bit. And I had went to Black Bike Week, which is this all-black motorcycle event down in South Carolina, down in Myrtle Beach. And I had got like 30,000 views off the, uh, off the one video. And I'm like, oh, shoot, like this is crazy. And I started getting subscribers. And I went from like 30 subscribers up to like 150 subscribers. Mm. So I'm like, oh, shoot, like this is, this is pretty dope. Like maybe, maybe this could be something. So Dom is over here whispering in my ear. They want to see more of the bikes, Devin. They want to see more of the bikes. But I'm still trying to give them real estate stuff. You know, I'm still trying to talk about, you know, why I started it. Not realizing that I could do both. So 
I'm doing my, I'm, you know, I'm listening to myself. You know, I should have listened to my woman, but I'm listening to myself. And I'm still doing my own thing with it. And sooner or later, I just started getting a little bit more comfortable talking about the bikes and introducing the bikes a little bit to the channel. And that was kind of 2019. I think the channel grew to maybe 200 subscribers by the end of 2019. And then 2020 hit, and I was coming out with a different energy with it. I was like, you know what? If they want to see the bikes, that's what I'm going to give to them. Because, mind you, it's the pandemic. We got to get creative. You know, I ain't got that much money coming in. I ain't got the corporate job no more. But I'm still trying to live all summer on the bikes and enjoy myself and be able to do stuff. So I started doing a lot of motorcycle content. And the channel grew to 1,000 subscribers. And then it got monetized. And it was like, oh, shoot, this is dope. And I remember getting the first check. The first check was for, I only got paid like three days. Because I got paid, I started getting paid at the very end of June. So I got paid for like three days of June. And it was like 70 bucks. And I was like, oh, shoot. Cause I was thinking like I was only gonna be making like 50 cents a dollar you know what I'm saying I just my channel was small so I didn't really think it was gonna be doing nothing crazy but then July hit and I made like seven hundred and seventy five dollars so was it so you start monetizing that five hundred or a thousand my a thousand okay yeah a thousand and like four thousand watch hours okay yeah okay. yeah so you start monetizing that thousand subscribers and then four thousand watch hours and I hit that last June of 2020 and like I said the first check second check Third check rolled in was dang near a grand. The fourth check was a little bit over a grand. And I was like, oh, shoot, I think we how, might be on this. How often are they coming? One, once a month. Wow. So you get paid uh, January or, you know, like beginning of the month through end of the month. Yeah. YouTube University kids. And, and so it's, 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 it's real. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So at this point, I'm starting to see the idea of a brand building. Mm. And I'm like, wow, like Devin Clark as a brand instead of just Devin Clark, you know. So, you know, the YouTube channel was growing. And that was basically 2020. It was just sort of like posting videos of me vlogging, introducing a little real estate stuff, talking about like how I was making money at the time. Like I talked about my driving for Amazon, talked about selling real estate, talked about YouTube a little bit, um, talked about the rental properties. And I was just sort of kind of giving people an insight into my life. So then, like I said, towards the end of 2020, things slowed up because once the motorcycles got put up, a lot of my views went down mm. because I realized most of my subscribers was basically there for the motorcycle <clears throat> lifestyle type content, mm -hmm. right? They really wasn't trying to, they wasn't trying to get educated. Right. That's just the reality. Right, right, they right. wasn't trying to learn. They wasn't trying to, you know, better themselves. They just wanted to see somebody young doing their thing and get, you know, inspired, which is 100% cool. So things slowed up. And at that point is when I kind of, like I started looking for like different opportunities. I started looking for jobs because I was still driving for Amazon. The real estate sales has slowed up a little bit because now we in the winter time. And I ended up getting blessed with this opportunity working for full-time for a title company, right? So I got the job at the very end of December 2020. Yeah, December 2020. I'm sorry. December 2020. And I ended up getting the position from a buddy of mine who I met at Penske, right? So it's funny, like full circle how everything works out. But anyways, I ended up getting the position. And the position was everything that I could have asked for Penske. Everything I wish Penske would have been, um, that's what this position is, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... Got the position, and then this year, um, once March hit, you know it's a different feeling when you got a when you got a little side hustle. But when your main hustle, when your main job is paying you enough money to do everything you're trying to do, you're able to hit the side hustle with a different type of energy. Mm. You know, when you're not stressed out at the main hustle, and you can get off work, come home, and be creative, in which I wasn't able to do that at Penske. Mm. Um, you know, you're able to just move a little different, right? So this year has been totally different because I was making like such great money at the job that I didn't really, you know what I'm saying? I, I was just really able to just throw everything I had into YouTube, just having fun with it, just, you know, pushing out content, just me. The basically the way I describe YouTube right now is if I post a video, that means I was out kicking it. Mm. Cause I ain't really been doing no videos of me just sitting talking. Really most of my videos of me out on the motorcycles, kicking it, vlogging, hanging out with my friends, just living our best lives, right? So that's really been this year. So this year we had one month well, actually, so it's important to say Dom's channel actually got monetized this year as well. Mm. So we had one month where we made just shy of four thousand dollars. Just in a month. Just in a month. Yeah, one month. That, and that's both of you guys' channel to go combined. Together. Yep. Yep. Still good bread. So that's more money than I make at the day job. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So and plus the real estate and everything like that. And like, what is what is what is her channel? So her channel is titled XO Dom. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So make sure y'all go subscribe. Go subscribe to my channel at Devin Clark. Um. But yeah, man. When when everything started hitting, it became bigger than just you know, us posting videos, it was like, man, now I'm starting to get DMs every day talking about, bro, watching your videos is really inspiring me. Bro, seeing your videos, man, you really got me kind of thinking about going back to church. Mm. Bro, your videos, man, got me looking up Rich Dad Poor Dad. Mm. I just read Rich Dad Poor Dad mm. and I rocked with it. Like, it's like, 
whoa, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is like, God is really using me. I'm really living my purpose. Um, so the YouTube channel has sort of turned into me wanting to turn it into more of a brand in which the youth public speakers came out of that. Yeah. 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 That's, that's so fire, man. That's first, first off. Yeah. First, 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 <laughs> I know that was like nah, a nah, throw nah, up nah, a word. Nah, 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 nah. You're doing, you doing, you doing a hell of a job. Um, first and foremost, man, for those who doubt YouTube and, and doubt technology and doubt the power of content, you're behind and we'll catch you down the road. You know, because content is king. The content is king. Content is king. Content is very what I like to describe it to people is it's like it's like it's it's music. It's like royalties and music. Right. You know, when you own your masters and your royalties to your music, right. you can literally play a song years and years and years and forever. years forever. Yeah, forever. You know, yep. but the owner of that music, the owner of those masters, gets a check from that. The same thing with content yep. when you build a brand around it and you Pump, pump, pump. You know what I'm saying? YouTube you, is like digital real estate. Because 100%. my videos make me money. Like I got a video that just went live probably, I don't know what time it is, but it went live at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. That video is going to make me money forever now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now over the next week, it's going to make me more money probably than it ever will. Yeah. But even for the rest of my life, it's still going to make money with me doing nothing. I posted the video one time and it'll make money forever. So what do you, so <clears throat> I know you say, you know, your lady ended up telling you, listen, Dev, man, you got to, you got to commit to this this bike stuff that's what right. people are eating up yeah now what 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 is it now is it is it still the bike stuff is it more of the inspirational stuff right the motivational stuff i know you said the education piece they still weren't kind of yeah you know yeah. Jumping so to. what's that, what's more of the the inspirational educational piece is going to be more of like an outside my youtube channel type of thing okay you will see a few videos here and there of that to promote my brand outside okay but and because i have an audience that some of my audience does like that you mm. know what i'm saying i got like a subscriber base of like a thousand people who will watch no matter what i post just because they rock with me whereas the rest of my subscribers i would say they like to see that motorcycle content so for the most part my youtube channel right now is motorcycle lifestyle me out living my best life and then seeing inspiration from that mm. you know because a lot of people they see inspiration from a young dude out living his best life because yeah. most people aren't living right you right. know what i'm saying right. most people are waking up miserable every day Facts. so when they see somebody on youtube with a smile when it, on his face right. talking about the lord talking right. about how happy he is right. you know clearly you see all this stuff behind right. me <laughs> right. like we living right you know so that's that's like the focus of my youtube channel so i understand that my motorcycles are only out from let's say march through October. So on the off season, I probably won't post that much. Mm. But I know that my main earning season on YouTube and my main season where I'm reaching money. Yeah, my, my <laughs> main season where I'm reaching a lot of people and really touching a lot of lives through that inspiration will be during the summer months. So from um, year to date, we have reached like 1.4 million people via our YouTube channel, via my YouTube channel, Oof. not including Dom's YouTube channel. Oof. So if you include hers too, you know. So man. <laughs> so it's crazy, but it's like, it's just a blessing that God is using me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I asked him when I was at that job, I asked him, I said, God, help me to live my purpose. And in 2020, you asked me how 2020 was. 2020 was good, <clears> but <throat> it wasn't to the extent that I had been hoping, but it was growth, right? I was taking steps. And Pastor preached a couple weeks ago. He said, little by little. And I didn't understand. That was my little by little. And now, you know what I'm saying? It's still little by little, but it's it's better than it was. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, so yeah. progress. So so okay. So if it's a if it's a young person out there <clears throat> who's getting ready to start a YouTube channel, not yeah. even necessarily a young person, yep. man. It could be somebody my anybody. age a little bit or right. in, yeah. anybody. If they're starting a YouTube page and they're looking to monetize it, but they're not into to bikes. They don't even necessarily know what their niche is. Right, right. What's some what's some guidance that you would tell them to kind of like be able to hone in on what it is that they do best and like what they want to capture? Right, right. The first thing I would say is if you're looking to start a YouTube channel for monetary game, I probably wouldn't start it. Mm. Because the thing that I've noticed about YouTube is it's real wishy-washy. Mm. And what I mean by that is you might have, I told you that month we had, we did just under 4,000. We did like $3,800. The next month, we did about $2,000. Mm. So if you, like, putting all your heart into it, like, the same heart was in it, right? I'm still giving out the same game. I'm still putting out the same effort. But if you just doing it for the check, you're going to stop doing it when you see, man, they ain't even rocking with me no more. I'm going to, man, I'm going to go put my effort somewhere else where I can make some more money. Um, so that would be the first thing. Don't chase the monetary game. But as far as starting a YouTube channel, the most respectable advice I got for starting my YouTube channel is just being yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, people want to see you. And the sad reality that I realized with my channel is people didn't really want to sit there and be educated by me. 
they wanted to get entertained by me. <laughs> and that's what my channel was basically turned into. It's like a, a little TV show, Day with Dev, you know, and that's, that's what it is. So that kind of sucked for me because, like I said, my girl was trying to tell me that. She was like, hey, they trying to be entertained. They trying to see the bikes. They trying to see the lifestyle. They don't really care what you got to say right now. Yeah. And that kind of hurt because it was like, well, if they listen to what I had to say, they could make this happen in their life. Right. You know, but she was like, that's cool and everything, and you could still implement that, which I do. Um, but that ain't going to be the basis of your channel. The basis of your channel is just going to be living your life, showing them the lifestyle, and, you know, that's what it is. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm super intrigued by this conversation, man, because it's so, you know, it's, it's very much relevant to, um, I think, both of our business models. Right. But it's just relevant into um, what the future is going to continue to be, which right. is going to be it's going to be heavy on the technology, heavy on the content. Um, and what we're going to see is we're going to just see more creators get into this space. Right. Um, and I, I, I love that you continue to highlight, listen, do not focus on the money. Right, right. You know, yeah, Because yeah. a lot of people, they'll ask me, because they know my YouTube channel is monetized. I don't really get too specific anymore. That's probably the most specific I've been in a while. Um, but they know that, you know, once you reach a certain point, you are making money off of YouTube. And I always thought that a channel of my size made a lot less than it did. But to make $1,000 a month for posting videos and me going out and riding my motorcycle for the day, which I'm going to be doing anyways... It's kind of sweet, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like most people, they just need that intention of doing it from the heart. And I don't post the videos to make a check. You know what I'm saying? Like I could get a check elsewhere. I could work harder at my job and make more money. Would I want to do that? Not necessarily. I'd rather make money living my best life. And God has blessed me to be able to do that. But I feel like if an individual wants to start a YouTube channel, be themselves, just explore, find this niche. I'm following this dude who just started a channel, it looked like a couple months ago, younger black dude. Um, he's a real estate agent. He's just been posting videos. He started posting, um, he was posting real estate videos, started catching a lot of traction, channel got monetized, boom. He started posting some personal finance videos and he made a little post on it um, last week like, hey, I think I started this too early. I'm not really getting the support that I thought I was gonna have posting these videos, so I'm gonna jump back to the real estate, talk about the real estate sales right now. And I like how he did that because it's like he's understanding where his audience is and that's where he's going after, you know. How many videos are you doing a, a, a week? Um, typically I try to post two to three. Yeah. Two to three on a great week. Right. And the majority of them short videos under 10 minutes? Uh, no, the majority are between 10 and 25 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yup. Yeah, man. I, <clears throat> and, 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 and part of building the ecosystem of my podcast, yes. right? Um, I understand that, you know, the podcast is just going to, it's going to just be the, it's going to be the foundation right. of it all. Right. Right? right. You know, and by finding different branches to build off of, it's going to it's not going to allow the podcast to grow, but it's going to just allow the brand to continue to grow. Right. And the YouTube the YouTube um, community is one that I know that there's a lot of value, there's tremendous value in it. I right. am a, I tell everybody, I am a podcast junkie. Okay. You know, okay. I started you know even before doing this podcast, I was a consumer first. Really? Okay. You know, and I still, you know, take in a lot of content. Right. And like, as you're talking about how this YouTube thing breaks down, I'm thinking about a bunch of channels that I watch and I see them refurbish their content yeah. all the time. Yep. And now I understand why that is because right. it's literally just digital real estate yep. and they are getting passive income off yep. these videos. Yep. Like I know the one channel on um, Vlad TV that I watch. Okay. They literally, he literally reposts <laughs> the same videos from like six months ago. You know what's year. funny though? Every time he posts that video, say he gets 100,000 views. That's $700 to his pocket. Bro. Between 700 and and $1,000. And it's the same video. Same video, bro. But he gets it. In, but you got to think about something. A lot of YouTube channels, depending on how fast they're growing, a lot of my new subscribers have never seen my yep. old videos. Yep, 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 yep. So I'm falling behind by not having those old videos. And, so, he, and he's just tricking the algorithm to exa work. Exactly. So he's a genius. Exactly. You know, and right. that's and that's that's the king of content. The same post be going around Instagram. Yeah, right. <laughs> and people love it. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I followed this guy, his uh YouTube channel was Richard Fain, older mm -hmm. black dude, talks about personal finance, mm -hmm. right? And talks about how over the past twenty years he's invested and done well for himself. Now he has a million dollars and he talks about how he did that. And I, I've noticed recently within the past month. I started looking at these thumbnails and I'm like, wait, I saw that video before, but it's a new video. You know what I'm saying? And that's because he's smart. He's realizing, okay, if I posted this video last year, I had 100,000 subscribers and 5,000 people watched this video. Yeah. Boom. I made, say he made, you know, $500 off that video. 
this year he might make ten thousand off the same video because it got more subscribe. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a, it's, it's a game content. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So so man, you touched on this a little bit ago, but the motivation of speaking. Yes. You know. Yes. If y'all can hear this dude, man, y'all y'all hear him right now on the audio through the visual. Infectious energy to say the least. He's a natural at speaking, you know. So walk me through, man. Walk me through again, man, how the motivational speaking, you know, just just came about for you. So I've been speaking for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. Random people, you know, from hearing me, hearing me speak, just random events. Um, people have asked me to come speak at their event um, in just different situations, different events. I spoke at my high school graduation. I spoke to the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, different mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's something that I've always wanted to do on like a professional level. Mm -hmm. I just didn't really know how to jump into the industry. I've always wanted to be a youth inspirational speaker. I always dreamed of being in high schools, teaching, you know, life success, but as well as personal finance, you know, how to build your credit, how to um, buy real estate, stuff I really wanted to talk about on my YouTube channel. So it's always been a dream of mine. But up until this past six months, I didn't really know how to break into the industry. I came across this guy on Instagram, ironically. Um, marketing to me, had ads running. His name is Jeremy Anderson. Okay. And anyways, he's a youth motivational speaker and he basically was selling this course that kind of broke down how to actually set up your business. So how to set up a website, um, what to put on the website, how to get everything set up as far as like the business model behind it. And then how to reach out to the schools. Who are you reaching out to? Are you reaching out to the principal? Or are you going higher than the principal? Like what are you, you know, what are you doing? So I ended up investing in the course. The course was, the course was originally priced at $2,000, right? I ended up signing up for one of them, you know, how they be doing. Like if you go on like a Sunday and you listen to the two hour course, that's what I did. Or the two hour little, this is why you should buy the course basically. You've yeah, seen those yeah, stuff, yeah, you've seen yeah, that stuff before. Yeah, um, but I did that and he ended up giving a discount on the course. So the course was $1,000. And for me, that was one of them points where it was like, dang, $1,000 for this course. You know what I'm gonna be getting from this course? But I had to realize like, okay, if this is something that I've been dreaming of doing for the past five years, this is what I need to do. And I finally feel like I got a story to tell. So I'm like, let's do it. So I invested $1,000 and I made that big announcement last week on my social media mm -hmm. that, hey, I'm officially a youth inspirational speaker. Yep. And I'm gonna tell you, not even 24 hours passed, man. And I made that post. I got an inquiry mm. for a youth inspirational speech out of, I don't even know how to pronounce the city, but I believe it's Kenosha, Wisconsin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but anyways, one of my YouTube subscribers, mm -hmm. so you were talking about using your podcast as a base. Mm -hmm. That's how I really see my YouTube channel. I see my YouTube channel as basically me now having an audience that I can market to and share my gifts with the world and ultimately transform that into me public speaking across the world. Mm. So he reached out to me and he said, hey, I want you to come speak to my boys varsity basketball team. And uh, of course we'll pay you to come out and everything like that. So not even 24 hours after me publicly announcing it, so all my friends, my family, um, all my subscribers, got them, blessed me and showed me that, hey, yes, I need you in this space, let's go. You know. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. So how, how did he find you? Uh, he, he's been a subscriber of mine for the he past was, couple years. Wow. Ironically, yeah. Wow. And he, it, it was funny, he was like, man, about time. I've been inspired by your story. Mm. So how many people else are inspired by my story and want me to come out and speak to their school, event, organization, whatever? But he was like, about time, man, I've been inspired by your story. So I would love for you to come out, speak to my boys and girls, varsity basketball team. And, uh, you know. So, <clears throat> all right, so you just said that, you know, you look at your YouTube channels being the base. Yes. Is the motivational speaking, is that kind of where you see yourself and the brand just ultimately being the forefront of, of everything the yes speaking? yes that's where i see basically most of my time being got it. i'll still do the youtube i'll still you know i'm never gonna stop riding motorcycles unless i got injured or something like that's some <laughs> right. crazy right um but you know i'll always I'll ride motorcycles so i'll always enjoy you know vlogging you know everybody like the vlog everybody like being on camera a little bit you know even though people be acting like they don't like it you know once they get used to it they be like oh i like this yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's a you fact. know it's it's fun you know what i'm saying it's fun having a camera fun vlogging fun inspiring a lot of people like i said i wake up every day to messages of people on instagram dming me where i gotta accept their request because i don't know who they is um but just saying bro i've been subscribed to your channel for a while you really inspire me to do better you really inspire me to believe in God or go to church or give God another try. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. It's people that tune in from my channel to our live service that live out of state because I talk about my church so much. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? YouTube will always be there, but YouTube is my base. And now that I have a brand, I see the brand growing from there into me doing a lot of youth inspirational speaking. Yeah, that's fire, man. That's that that's so that's it's so powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, man, we got Devin Clark again, man. If you did if you didn't know, um, 
why real estate, man? How'd you get involved in just like the education behind real estate and understanding the value and the power of real estate investing? So when I bought the duplex, so I'll give you my little mini mini real estate life story, I guess. Um, in 2018, when I was at the job that I hated, bought my first property. We lived in that property for a full year. The next year, I bought the duplex. The duplex is what enabled me to quit that job to cut my living expenses a little bit, get the job with Amazon, get my real estate license, etc. So when I bought the duplex, and a couple months into it, everything worked out. I'm like, oh shoot. Like if this is all some people would have to do to get out of that miserable waking up every day, not being happy, not living, you know, situation, like dang, like people need to hear this. And all I did was I saved up a little money. I had a decent job. I had decent credit <clears throat> and boom, I was able to buy it. Mm -hmm. And then people think, you know, I'm getting calls about the toilet every day, the roof leaking every other day. I ask people all the time. I'm like, so the house you grew up in, was stuff going wrong every day? And most of the time the answer is, you know what, now that I think about it, nothing hardly ever went wrong. You know, every now and then we had a little problem we had to fix, but it, for the most part, stuff stayed pretty cool. So I'm like, well, that's how my rental properties are. I buy them, I fix up whatever need fix. And for the most part, I don't really get any calls. Every month on the first, I get sent the money and mm -hmm. you know, we rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. So I love what they've done to my life. So I want, I want other people to experience that. And that's what I'm about with everything, man. I love just being able to pour my heart out into people because I'm so blessed and I, wanna, I want everybody to be blessed, man. I don't want anybody waking up every day, being mad, not being able to get what they want. When people see me on that bike, you know what I'm saying? People be looking at me like I'm crazy on that big old bike. I'm a little dude, y'all. I'm only like five, six, <laughs> but I got a big old Harley. Go check me out on YouTube, you know? <laughs> but quick plug, but people, I'll be pulling up to red lights and people will look over and you know, I don't know what they be thinking. You know what I mean? They, they like, man, this young dude, man, he probably into something illegal. Or this young dude, man, he got a rich daddy. This young dude, nah, man, this young dude just gotta drive. Yeah. He gotta drive and he's focused and he wants a lot of his life and he doesn't stop until he gets it. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody to realize that we all got it in us. Mm -hmm. We just gotta make it mm -hmm. happen. You know what I'm saying? We gotta make it happen. So. How do you how do you view, you view freedom? Like how, how, how often, and if, how, yeah. not only how do you view it, but yeah. how often do you think about freedom? Every day. Yeah, every day, sadly. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my, so you, early in the podcast, you had talked about um, living in the moment, right? And one of my weaknesses is I've always looked into the future, man. Mm. I'm always, I'm always hustling for the future. And when I was in that situation, I learned to live in the moment. And when I started defining success and I started realizing that success in my life really meant happiness, I realized that the happiest people aren't living in the past, like you said. They're not living in the future, they're living in the now. And that's something that I never did because all throughout school, I hated school. I didn't really wanna be there. I was always hustling in school so that I could graduate, get some money and start living. You know, so I was always pushing forward, living in the future. Like, all right, I only got two more years of school and I'm finally done. But when I finally hit that point where I was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta you know, chase this happiness game. I started living in the moment and it was like, dang, like, Life is actually pretty good, you know, if I would just stop and realize it. But you asked about freedom. So I think about freedom every day. That's one of my weaknesses. I'm always focused. I'm always chasing. Like right now, I'm saving for my next investment property mm -hmm. um, because my ultimate goal is to achieve financial freedom through real estate mm -hmm. um, such that the stuff like the YouTube channel, the stuff like the youth, youth inspirational speaking, it's great. If I make a bag, great. But if I don't make any money from it, I'll still be good yep. without having to rely on a day job in order to provide for me. Yep. I'm blessed to have an amazing day job and I see myself being here for a while, but at the end of the day, I'm not gonna be 60 years old working at no day job. You know what I'm saying? I probably won't be 35 years old working for a day job. Not the way things are looking right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm probably, I'm about four or five properties away from everything being covered. Good, yeah. Good. Wonderful, man, wonderful. Listen, you, you've, you've mentioned your lady a few, a few different times. Yeah, yep. as, a, as a married man, there is no greater asset than having a strong partner right. and a strong lady right there. That's real. And I'm not talking about strong the way that we think. And I'm not, I'm talking about strong, meaning a good supporter. Right. Someone who listens to you. Somebody allows you to vent to them. Right. Somebody allows you to, you know, to, to grow with them. You right. know, somebody allows you to, to fail and not judge you for it. Right. You know, right. that's, that's what I'm referring to when I say, you know, a, a strong, a strong partner. Again, you've, you know, you've referenced your lady a few different times. If y'all haven't seen on his YouTube channel, he just proposed, you know, yep, to ladies, yep. so congrats on that, I appreciate man. it, man. You I got down on one knee, yep. Just, <laughs> just talk up a little bit about, man, just the importance of 
what your lady has meant to you, what she means to you, you know, um, and and the value, you right. know, that she that she that she's bringing to you. So it's funny, man. Dom and I we met in high school, so we met the summer before senior year. So oh, y'all high school sweethearts. High school sweethearts. Oh, y'all right? already rare as it is. So it's it's <laughs> crazy because we have grown. If you think about how much a person grows from that graduate from high school point to that point where you get out of college, you like a totally different person, right? Yeah. So it was dope for us because we basically grew through that together. Mm -hmm. So we were basically we were at different points in high school like she grew up she talked about it a little bit on her last youtube uh, video actually go subscribe to her channel at exo dom but dom grew up in and out of foster care mm. so when i met her she was actually in foster care and i had no idea mm -hmm. right so that was something where when we first started dating that was one of the first real conversations that we had to have it was like hey she sat me down and she was like i got something to tell you i don't want this to scare you but this is something this is my life like this is how i grew up you know what i'm saying and currently this is my current situation and it was real because it was like, dang, first off, the respect for her to even feel comfortable telling me that she could have kept it a secret. She said she was living with a friend. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't going to question that. Okay, mm -hmm. you're living with a friend, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but for her to trust me, you know, that kind of built that trust. And then from then on, it was just sort of building. It was, you know, talking about what she wanted out of her life, what I wanted out of my life. And just coming together as a team and building our dream life together. And that's what we've done, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we've done. We graduated. She went to Kent State. I went to Akron. Went through college together. Um, and just everything, all the properties we done done together, um, and just just built together. What the you learn? What you learn from her? Everything. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy thing is, I learn everything from her. I'm more of the the personal finance type, money smart, like geek type dude. Like I'm into all that type of stuff. Like I love reading the Rich Dad Poor Dad books and all that stuff. Um, she's not more so like that, but she's more like that hands on, smart, like real smart, like know how to like if we got a problem right here, she can figure it out. Whereas me, I'm common sense smart and I'm sort of book smart, but as far as like solving a problem like right here, like say we gotta change that doorknob over there or something, you know, if I ain't never done it before, I'm like, man, you see this, man, I could just pay somebody for right, this. Right. Where she like, man, shut up, let's fix this I real quick. This, I can, right. do, we yeah, can do this yeah. ourselves real quick and knock this out. So when we bought our first house, man, I ain't never painted nothing a day in my life. We painted that whole house. Now when I say we, it was me. Her mainly and her dad mainly, <laughs> but then the duplex, it was basically just me and her. And in this most recent house that we live in now, um, that we own, we uh we painted it by ourselves. You know what I'm saying? But when we met three years, you know, three years ago when we bought that first house, it was like, man, I ain't painting nothing. You know, I don't know how to paint. I ain't never been taught how to paint. But she's patient, and I don't know, man. She just is always forcing me to learn something new and forcing me to grow. I told you about the YouTube channel. It was her idea. It wasn't my idea to jump on YouTube. I I really never ever been like a camera guy. I never really dreamt of being on camera. I did want to do the youth motivational speaking, but I had never really dreamt of, you know, being like a camera dude. But, you know, she was like, hey, you got something in you. You should give it a shot. We was always watching YouTube. I've all, like, I, you talking about you a content junkie, bro. I'm a content junkie. She get on me every day. Every day I come home, I want to turn on some YouTube. I'm watching everybody I'm subscribed to at work. I'm listening to podcasts all day, you know. Listen to your podcast, Tweet mm. Talk Podcast, mm. Earn Your Leisure. You know all of them. We yeah, all listen yeah, to the same podcast. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, she just forces me to grow, bro. And that's that's the whole relationship since we've been together. And that's, you know, why I had to get down on one knee, man. She yeah. is literally, when I picture somebody as my better half, like that would be hers. So, yeah. well, yo, congratulations. I appreciate that, it, bro. Man, yeah, thank you. Know, you. They, they, a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. Right, and I right. know that to be 100% That's a real, fact, bro. you know, speaking from my own personal experience. And I definitely understand what you say she has taught me everything i overstand my brother I, but, but I get bro it. i have I to say it. something to you since you know we got the we got the light right now i mm -hmm. have to say i think you and i think men like my pastor i think men like you know the men that we see the men who have stepped up to the plate and asked women to be their wives mm -hmm. because in our society like you said that glamour mm -hmm. you know the, the street lifestyle yeah, right yeah, yeah, you yeah. see everybody out here with a bunch of different women yeah. doing whatever they feel like doing and you sort of feel like that's like wait wait is that the path like everybody's saying don't get married young don't this don't do that but then seeing cats like yourself where it's like no nah, a man who finds a wife finds a good thing like yeah. no nah, you need to you know you need to lock this up so it's dope that men like yourself men like my pastor uh, men like the owner of the company that i work for you know will literally sit me down and say hey you know what i'm saying like what you doing like you need yeah. to you know yeah no man that's what's that, the hold up yeah, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. yeah no, so it fact. took me some time i had to grow yeah. right but as I grew, I realized, like, no, nah, like, this is the woman that I want to spend the rest of my life with, and I can confidently say that. Yep, you know what I'm saying? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I, um, first and foremost, man, thank you. For yeah, the for sure. I, yeah. I appreciate yep. that. Um, but yeah, man, there's, um, the, 
the greatest decision I ever, you know, I ever made was, you know, pursuing my wife, okay. you know, and being able to marry her. That's like, you real. know what I'm saying? Like, it was, I tell the story, I, I, I've told the story before, but like when I initially asked her out, she hit me with a cold note. I listened like, to that episode, oh, actually. Yeah, yeah. Note. I think a, I listened to that episode a, twice. A, a, cold, a, yeah. cold, a cold note. She okay. was not having it at all. Okay. But in that moment, even though my confidence was shattered, you know, insecurities rose to right. the ceiling. Right. Something within me still said, you know what? You know, just keep trying. Okay. Be persistent. Um, so, and able to, you know, just court her and wear her down ultimately, and, you know, ultimately getting married. My, I've seen the train. I've seen the connection and the correlation to my life in every aspect. I'm healthier than I ever been really? mentally, physically. I see you at the gym every morning, five a.m. I'll be looking at the Instagram every, stories every day, yeah. bro. Like, it's, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be able to understand the true value of that. Really, with, without my my lady, you That's know, what I'm, real. I'm talking That's about deep. every aspect of it. Okay, you know, I wouldn't even, I definitely wouldn't understand the power of healing okay. and, the, and the power of being intentional about my own mental wellness without her that right. that that wouldn't be the case i wouldn't even have the courage to be able to chase a dream like establishing my brand as a podcast right. and establishing myself as a brand without her support that's real you, man you, you know that's what I'm saying? everything man that's that's all anybody could ever dream of you know and what that does for me circles back to what you said earlier which is it allows me to be happy. That's it. <laughs> you know, you know, that's you, it, you know what I'm saying? And that's so, the goal. That's the goal of life. I feel like everybody is chasing happiness. And when you find it, you just want to give it to as many people as possible. And I feel like that's what you do through your podcast episodes. I don't care what you say. When I was driving that Amazon truck, listening to these podcasts every week religiously, you know, I felt happiness through it. You know what I'm saying? You, I felt like a dude who was living his life happy and trying to give game to everybody else. And thank that's you. what I get out of the pocket. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just you are living, you are the definition of living your purpose, mm. which is your brand. You know what I'm thank saying? You. You're living your purpose. And you inspired me. I told you when we talked on the phone that time, yeah, when yeah, I asked, yeah. yep. um, I said, bro, seeing this, I'm, I want to live my purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's what God has enabled me to do. I'm living my purpose now. And Look, you, you started the brand, hey, you know? Hey, it's yeah. powerful, man. It's powerful. It's a blessing, man. So. Listen, man, that's a wonderful way to end it right there, man. Again, man, we got Devin Clark in the building, ladies and gentlemen, man. If you don't know, now you know, man. Dev, man, thank you so much, man. Thank this, you. This has, been, this has been very powerful, very valuable. Appreciate it. Um, I thank you, man. You know, everything that you, you know, that you want for yourself, man, I, I give that energy to you, young man. Appreciate continue it. to keep going. Do your thing. Don't stop. Don't let people stop you. You right. know, continue to love on your lady. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Be patient. Okay. Um, and keep doing your thing, man. You know, I, I really, I really want to continue to keep seeing you seeing you a sin, man. You appreciate know, I, 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 I appreciate what you put out there to the universe. So just as much as you said that you gained value from listening to me. I've gained value from listening to you from afar too, man. Your motivational it. videos, you literally just being yourself. Right. That is so powerful, right, you right. know, and for young people to see the value of being themselves in a world where it's so easy to get caught up in being somebody else, right. you know, allow me to tell you, man, and affirm to you, you're doing a great thing, man, and you providing a lot of value, you know, and even to people older like myself. So I thank you for thank that, you. man. Thank I you, continue sir. to, you know, you know, continue to support you. I want to continue to see you to grow, man. So thank you again. I appreciate it. You know, I got to ask a question as an OG, uh, yeah, go OG ahead. subscriber, go man. Ahead, I've been bro. subscribed go since ahead. day one, go ahead, you know, go to the ahead, podcast. Go ahead, for sure. Go ahead. Who, who we lobbying for, man? So, all right. So, okay. So hold on. So hold on. Let me get through these rapid questions. Okay, perfect, and we're going to lobby at the bet, end. Bet, bet. Okay. All right, yep, all right, yep. bet. Okay. All right. Bet, 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 bet. So, um, first question, man. What's, what, what what are your goals going forward, man? Just like, what do you see for yourself 5, 10, 15 years down the line? I know you like to be stuck in the moment. Right, right. But I know you got a future oh, yeah, line of how you see yeah. things. So what do, what do you see for yourself, man? Absolutely. Bro? So number one, just being happy. Mm. Um, a big goal of mine was to eventually to propose to my girl. So I told you I did get down on one knee. We are getting married next year. We did pick a date, you know, for everybody wondering. Mm -hmm. September 17, 2021. Or 2022, I'm sorry. So okay. next year. Um, but my ultimate goal is just to be able to give, man. I feel like these past couple of years have been um, years of like growth. You know, like I've really been growing a lot. I really feel like I've went through a lot. I really lost my happiness. You know what I'm saying? And God has given me an opportunity to find it again. And now I just want to give it out to the universe. So that's what I try to do to you through YouTube. 
And that's also what I want to do through my youth inspirational speaking. So that would be a big goal of mine. And of course, to continue building a real estate portfolio. Right now, we at three rental properties. So next time I'm on a podcast, I wonder what I'll be at. You know, but I'm not as gun ho on chasing that as I was because I'm learning that, you know, happiness in the moment is more important than chasing some future. You know what I'm saying? So of course, I'm working towards a goal, but I ain't got to be there tomorrow. You know, I ain't got to be no overnight success. I can take my time. If I don't get there in two years, it take me ten. I'll still get there. I'm the same you know? way, man. Yeah. That, that, that's good. What are your um what are your intentions for, for finishing out the year 2021, man? What are what are your intentions? What are some things you wanna, you know, be mindful of and intentional of putting out in the universe to end to end this year? That's a real one, man. So I'd say I really wanna be intentional on just like you said, being yourself, man. It's so difficult to look around, see what everybody else got going on. And to say, you know what, am I doing what God has called me to do or should I be doing what he doing over there? Right. But really, I just my goal is just to stay intentional, stay true to who I am and, um, you know, just stay in the same the same day from day one. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. What is your purpose and how is that connected to what you're doing today? My purpose is to inspire others. My purpose is to educate and inspire people to go out there, decide what it is they want and figure out a way to get it. You know what I'm saying? I say at the end of every one of my videos, when God is in it, there is no limit. Your dream life is out there. You just got to go get it. Yeah. And I want them to see that I went out and get it. I went out to get it. So you can go out and get it too. Right. You know, it's not impossible. What's something about you that people would be surprised to know? Something about me that people would be surprised to know. Woo. Um, well, I mean, if you follow the channel, you know that I got like a little addiction to speed. You know, uh-huh. I should, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you be, you be gunning that bad boy. Yeah, I, that's, that's probably something that a lot of people wouldn't, like a lot of people, if they don't follow the channel, they don't think I ride a motorcycle and they don't think that I like, you know, speed. But I drive I'm scared, like... I'm scared to death to get on that motorcycle. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, can't, I, drive I can't do it. A, I drive a fast car um, and I ride bikes and I like speed. You know what I'm saying? I like racing a little bit. <laughs> All you know? right, bro. Yeah. So. All right, no yeah. doubt. Um... What scares you? What scares me? Man, being in that situation again. Yeah, waking up and not being happy, right? Waking up, feeling depressed, waking up and feeling empty. Um, Going back to a state in which I felt like I didn't have any doors. Like, you know, I didn't see a door that God could open at that point. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking around just like, yeah, how is all the doors closed? Mm -hmm. That's how everything looked in my life. Um, So I feel like that is what scares me the most mm. because during that time, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't just affected me. It was affected my lady. I'm yeah. going home and I'm taking that energy home. Yep. She wondering what's wrong with you. I had a rough day at work. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. I'm not feeling it. So, you know, that was just a rough time for me. So that scares me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Thinking back to that. So that's why I strive every day to just do what makes me happy. I strive to do YouTube because pouring out into others helps me. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. 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 What's the best advice you ever received? Best advice I ever received was probably that advice to chase happiness and not materialistic stuff. Yeah. My whole life, I grew up, like, my dad has a lot of toys. Mm-hmm. Like, he has a lot of motorcycles. He has more motorcycles than anybody in the world needs. <laughs> um, has a legendary boat. You know, always has had nice vehicles. Has a nice house. And all that stuff is amazing. And I want all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I have most of that stuff. But what I've realized is that that stuff doesn't make you happy. That's right. So when you see in the rap videos and you see seeing <clears throat> everybody out here living their life on YouTube or whatever... That stuff isn't going to bring you happiness. Yep. That stuff may make you happy for a moment, yep. but that stuff ain't going to be there when you're waking up every day going to do something you don't want to do. So I said the best advice I'd have received is chase happiness. Yeah. Everything else will follow. Like I have, I'm making way more money than I was several years ago. Although everybody told me I was on top of the world then, now what am I? You know what I'm saying? I got way more equity in the properties than I had several years ago. Why? Because I chase happiness. What's your favorite quote? My favorite quote is, I have to say, when God is in it, there is no limit, man. Yeah, no yeah yep. Um, if you could pick up the phone and call your 20-year-old self, yeah. he was probably, you know, in that depressed yep. state. So that would have been, been almost four years ago. What would you tell yourself, knowing what you know today? I would say, stay true to who you are. Block, like, block out. <laughs> block out everybody else and what they have to say. Nobody else's opinion matters. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's you versus you. And at the end of the day, if you ain't happy, you can't help anybody else be happy. You can't get yourself to where you're trying to go if you in this state. So just believe in yourself and, and get out of that situation um, and, and chase your dreams, man, because they will come true. They, they, they not an overnight success. And that's something that I struggle with, um, you know, on my track. And I still do. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants something quick. But the reality is great things take time. And at the end of the day, now I sometimes downplay what I've accomplished over these past couple of years. Like I'm like... 
I only got three properties, man, but I'm listening to this Bigger Pockets podcast, dude talking about he 24 with 700 properties. Like, right. what am I doing? Like, right. what am I doing wrong? But right. it's like, wait a minute. I got more properties than almost everybody in my family. Right, right, right. I got more equity than almost everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's like, wait a minute. And we shouldn't even compare. Why am I even comparing? Just run your own You race. know what I'm saying? And that, that's probably that's probably the biggest one. Stop comparing. Focus on you. And it's you versus you. Yeah. yeah so that's, yeah. that's a huge. Yep. Well, listen, man. Thank you again, man. Give everybody your social media tags where they can find you at, man. Your YouTube channels and all that good stuff that you got coming up. The website. Tell everybody where they can find you, man. So go check me out on Instagram at the real Devin Clark. That's spelled with an I, not an O. And uh, go check me out on YouTube at Devin Clark. Um, again, go subscribe to my woman's channel as well at Exo Dom. And uh, John, I just really appreciate you having me on here. No man. problem, Thank man. You. No problem. So listen, Mary, you asked you asked the million dollar question: Who we lobbying for, yes, man? Sir. As you know, man. <laughs> part of this part of this podcast journey, man. I, I've tried to give when I, I have given the flowers to the individuals who have who've inspired me. Okay. You know, because a lot of times, man, when I could when I wouldn't look inside of myself, I had to go find the light elsewhere, which then directed the light back into myself. Um, and one of those people, you know, is um, none other than, you know, the guy himself, Charlemagne the God, man. Really? I love what Charlemagne has 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 done, you know, not only in the podcast space and just in the media space, um, but who this guy has continued to evolve into um, from a mental health advocate um, and just a lot of his education and just a lot of just, you know, personal development stuff that I've seen him grow and, you know, and be intentional about from afar. Um, I really love what he's doing, and I want to, you know, get the opportunity to pick his brain and really be able to have an authentic conversation with him right here on the platform. So if you could, bro, look in that camera right there. Yes, sir. Tell Charlemagne the God why he needs to be a guest on the Lilia Purpose podcast, man. Let that man know what he's missing out on, man. Charlemagne the God, this is Devin Clark. I'm a 23-year-old kid from the city of Akron. Mm -hmm. um, you know, coming from the city, we don't have many cats that we can look up to that's just the reality we don't have a lot of people trying to pour back into us we don't have a lot of people with platforms that are trying to you know inspire us trying to give us hope trying to give us life trying to show us what life is really about and john morgan jr is doing that yes sir, yes, yes, sir. sir. we live your purpose so please come on this podcast give us some game and uh and we love to have you listen Devin clark man if you don't know now you know man get inspired by this young man Catch him now, you know, before it's too late. Because I'm telling you, man, I, I can already feel it. I can see it, man, that this young man is going to have he, – he's, he's got a bright future ahead of him, man. So, Dev, man, thank you again. Again, man, shout out to everybody who's been supporting the podcast, man. Again, go to www.lypp.org to subscribe and uh, to get, get your merch, man. We got T-shirts. We got hats. We got some more good stuff and some more good products coming. Continue, continue to check it out. For those who've been asking, the hoodies will be back out soon in the fall. Y'all been going crazy over those hoodies, man, so we will be bringing those back. Again, go to the YouTube channel, the Live Your Purpose Podcast YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, share those things. Again, man, much love to everybody who's been supporting. Um, I cannot do this without you guys, man. The, the community allows me to continue to build. Um, you guys give me my own inspiration that I need to keep this thing moving, and I'm thankful Big shout out to my guy Darrell, man. I can't do this without my team either, man. This is this this may have been my idea, but my team and the people around me allow this thing to flourish. So much love to y'all. Let's keep it rolling. Y'all already know what it is. LYP, another episode. We out. Peace. <laughs>